Hey everyone, so I kind of just wanted to um, make a little intro for a, a bit, a bit of a mini documentary I, I've filmed and have um, edited over the past one or two weeks, which is actually um, about my mother. So my uh, mother, um, since uh, 2017, has been diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis, which as you know, as many as you might know, is a pretty um, debilitating brain condition, injury disorder. Um, but uh, I kind of wanted to sort of uh, just make a little video about her, her progress and her journey with the condition over the six years that she's been diagnosed with it. I, I don't think very many people really um, understand what it's like um, to have this condition or be with somebody who has a condition or maybe you do and you may may not understand a few things. I just kind of wanted to show that there is um, a lot of positivity in this journey as well. She has um, improved so much since that time and she has um, grown a bit since that time she was diagnosed. I just wanted to kind of like... Uh, shed some light on it and maybe bring some hope and maybe a bit of happiness and joy into the whole thing because you know a lot of these brain conditions are very can be very bleak and the prognosis can be very hopeless sounding and like it's just like a death sentence or it's all over but it, it really isn't anyway um with what i've um filmed i filmed a couple of my family members talking about how they felt um when they heard the news and how things have progressed and gotten better since that time. So overall, um, here, here's the documentary and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. All right, so can you um, tell us when you got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and what was your first reaction? I got diagnosed in October 2017 um, and I was a little bit shocked at first but I was also um, relieved because I've been going through multiple um, tests and you know doctors who just told me it was this depression, it was this, it was that, it was, you know, and finally um, when the MRI showed that there were some lesions um, and they actually were able to say what it was I realised, you know, finally someone um, believed me and there was actually something wrong. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was relieved. Okay. So, did you know for a while that something was wrong before the diagnosis was made? I had an inkling um, because, you know, you go on Google searches and, you know, you sort of find every possible thing that it could be. Everything from, it could be cancer, it could be this, it could be that, it could be multiple sclerosis, it could be um, motor neuron disease, you know, and I sort of had to stop myself looking at all the things that could be and just wait for the results to come through. So um, I knew that there was something wrong with me, but I didn't know what, and I was just waiting for what, okay. what the doctors were saying. And you were relieved when you finally got a name to something, someone to describe that what you were having. Definitely, yeah, yeah because with that, um, I could then tell people that you know, that I guess were worried about me, what was happening, um, that there was an actual diagnosis made and, you know, I think the hardest thing is is thinking that people think that it's in your head, um, that you're making it up, um, and it, it wasn't. Yeah. Well, it was in your brain, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. literally it was in my head, yeah, but yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. And um, were you shocked or... It must have been maybe a mix of shock or relief when you saw the pictures on your MRI. Yes, definitely, because um, I knew something was up. Yeah. And I was shocked to actually see that I had four lesions. I was more shocked about the size of the lesions and how they had 
manifested and how they'd started and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Why, why me? Um, but at the same time, I was re was relieved because yes, there was actually something that was causing the problems that I was having. Okay, and, and what were the sort of things that made you think that um that, that that was happening to your mind or your body that made you think that something wasn't right? Um, first of all, I guess I wasn't recovering. I was doing a lot of training, um, you know, running and and uh, triathlon training, and the first thing I sort of noticed was it was taking me longer and longer to recover. So, you know, I'd do a 5k run and I'd just be totally spent for the rest of the day where a lot of people, or a lot of my friends were saying, oh, I'm going to the movies, we're doing shopping, we're, you know, we're going out. And I'd be like, oh my God, I can't, I can't keep up. What's wrong with me? Um, but I guess what really, what really scared me was when I got like a, a web feeling, like a, a spider web feeling over the side of my face. Um, and then my balance and my coordination started to go. That's when I knew something was, was really wrong. But prior to that, it was more that I just yeah, wasn't recovering um, from things. I was forgetting things also. Mm -hmm. And you know, I thought I had sort of onset um, Alzheimer's and people would say, oh, I, you know, it's your age, don't worry about it. But I knew um, I was forgetting more and more and more. And again, it's one of those things where if you stress about it, it manifests itself. So I was trying not to worry about it, but at the same time I'm thinking, I'm, I'm forgetting things. And my mind wasn't as sharp as what it used to be. And it was also taking me a lot longer to type. I used to do a lot of um, typing on the computer, and it was taking me a lot longer to type things. And I was making a lot of mistakes, and I have to correct things um, like spelling and all that sort of stuff. Okay. So how did the condition affect you in the first few months to around about a year? I remember you being diagnosed with um, a really painful condition known as trigeminal neuralgia. Yes, yeah. Um, that's probably the worst condition or the worst pain that anyone could feel. And it was, it was almost like electric shocks going up the side of your face and, and into your head and, and, um, and sort of in, in your jaw and your teeth. And... It wasn't exactly trigeminal neuralgia, as in, um, you know, the trigeminal, trigeminal nerve is, is sort of just behind your ear. But where my lesion was, um, the nerve impulses was causing that area of the of the head or the, the jaw to um, to become, um, I guess, hypersensitive to a lot of things. So even though it felt like trigeminal neuralgia. It technically wasn't because there was no surgery that could fix it, only medication to slow the neuron impulses down. Um, yeah. So trigeminal neuralgia, the official could be treated with surgery. Or it it yeah. can be, yes, okay. yeah. Um, but because mine wasn't actual trigeminal neuralgia, even though the symptoms and the was the same, it wasn't caused by the same reason. Oh. I was just getting the same pain so right. to speak and um how did the uh, medication help the condition okay the medication I, I trialed a lot of different medications um the first one i was on was lyrica and that sort of just zoned me out i was like a zombie yeah. um but i found i needed more and more and more of it to get mm. the same effect and eventually i was just so tired and so zonked out with the medication it was like well what's what's worse you know having the medication make you feel like that or the actual symptoms yeah. also made you gain, um, gain some weight too yeah. um, eventually after sort of trialing a few different medications and you know um, I'm now on gabapentin um, and one tegretol which is an epilepsic epilepsy sort of medication um, and and Tarjan and um, fluoxetine, which mm -hmm. is an antidepressant, but it's also used for mm -hmm. pain receptors. So everything was just to slow the pain um, receptors down and the neurons firing, mm -hmm. I guess, to slow them down. Mm -hmm.
Can you um, maybe uh, tell me how maybe the label impacted you as a person, whether it was positively or negatively? Well, I, at first it was um, it was negatively because I, I had to reduce hours of work, um, you know, and I, I, I lost a lot of contact with some friends, especially the tri my triathlon friends, and I could see how well they were doing on social media and that sort of it was good in a way for them but for me it, it was sort of a it was hard to sort of fathom that I could no not I couldn't be like that so that that was hard you know to to be so close to something but yet so far removed so they were my friends but they were sort of the in, their interests now were very different as my interests was just not training, not doing everything opposite really, um, slowing down and, and making time for me. But out of that, the positivity was that I made more time for me and I started to slow down and have an easy pace for things and really enjoy life as in, you know what, I'm not dead, it's not terminal. I'm still breathing and I can still get up and I can I can do things and that actually helped me um, cope and also my family and um, you know and some of the friends that I did have really sort of helped me along with um, with the MS journey. name and um, how long you've been doing PT with, uh, with my mum. Uh, I'm Matt, um, I'm an exercise physiologist that's looking after Helen at the moment. Um, so her and I, we've been working together purely for a few months um, and then she's been working with another exercise physiologist, Frankie, um, all here at Science of Fitness. Mm -hmm. um, been working together for a while now. Uh, so they, she says a year as of to, as of next week, which is exciting. So we've seen some good uh, progress over the year. So, um, can you explain how Mum has improved with the multiple sclerosis symptoms over the year she's been coming here? Yeah, Helen's definitely improved a lot since coming here. So um, we've definitely made her a lot stronger and a lot a lot more improved coordination and balance with specific movements. Um, so she started off coming from just one-on-one -on -one sessions where we've been doing focused work and now she's actually coming along to a few of our uh, over 50s exercise classes as well. So she's definitely progressed from strict supervision into sort of more semi-supervision. Uh, over, the, over the year that we've been working on, she's been improved her strength, improved her aerobic capacity. Um, she's quite, a, quite an active and motivated individual, so she likes to do her runs, her bike rides. So, it's all about being able to maintain what she has and what she already is good at and sort of improving any other symptoms that uh, has been, has uh, unfortunately occurred due to her MS. Um, but she's definitely, definitely doing really well at the moment. Awesome. Okay, so uh, just to int introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Anthony Fletcher. Okay, so what, how did you feel when you found out that your wife had MS? Well, it was, obviously it was definitely a bit of a shock, you know, your partner of, you know, 20 something years is diagnosed with something and you sort of got to try and find out what it is that she's actually got and, and what sort of impacts it'll have in our lives. And um, so, yeah, they were sort of, to a certain 
degree unknown when she was first diagnosed. Um, and you know, it was a hard road those first few uh, little while we're learning all that. And then, um, you know, obviously the impacts over the next couple of years were, were quite substantial with her pain flares and everything. Um, but you know, we've uh, settled down to a, a reasonably good place now, even though she's still got the disease and that's still a challenge and that is, we've sort of, you know, got used to it and, uh, and, and how it works for us, so yeah. Okay. So, do you think there's a silver lining to all of this? Um, yeah, I think so. Look, um, we obviously get to spend a lot more time together these days because I'm obviously yeah, spending time caring for her. Um, so, we're together a lot. Um, it also gives me time to, um, I guess, care for other, others in my family, like um, my son William and my parents um, and my brother Chris. So, yeah, it's been, been okay. Obviously, I would, I'd prefer Helen not to have MS, but um, yeah, there's been positives in other areas where I've you know, been able to slow down and, 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 uh, and concentrate on some other relationships and hobbies and things that, um, that I probably wouldn't have otherwise been able to, so yeah. Cool, thank you. Yep, so tell me your name and um, your relation with Helen. With Helen. Yeah. Well, my name is Anne, and Helen is my daughter. So, um, what was your first reaction to finding out that your daughter had MS? Absolute shock, actually. And we knew that there was something not right, but because um, it started off so um, so trivial, so little, just a little numbness across the mouth here. Um, and then when she went to the hospital, they weren't sure exactly what it was and because um, she wasn't actually presenting with full on MS um, but as it turned out it is so it was actually quite shocking to find that out of your, your daughter and um, it was rather worrying too for me because it's nothing that I'd ever thought I'd ever have to deal with. Okay. So um, how has mum been over these past few years since the diagnosis? Do you think she's improved? Oh, absolutely, and I think because of the help, fantastic um, help of the, um, the medical system here, um, Helen has had a lot uh, done with the PA hospital, um, with the Manor Hospital, and um, I've been looking after her very well, and she's now on a, um, uh, what can I say, uh, like an injection that now she takes twice a year, which without that, I don't know how she would An infusion. And um, no, she's not on the infusion okay. anymore. They stop the infusion. She's on an injection now that she takes. And um, she gets on with her life very well. It's not the life that she had before. I mean, Helen was a consultant in the, um, in the childcare industry and drove all over. Um, the place and um, was always on the go, um, very smart young woman, still is, but um, you can see that the MS can take its toll at times with the memory and the speech, but apart from that, in my opinion, she's doing very well. Cool. Thank you. So have there been any real positive outcomes or silver linings to this whole situation? Um, I guess the one positive outcome is that I'm more aware now that everyone has a story, that everyone is fighting some sort of, whether it's a de demon or some sort of adversary in their life, and I just have to deal with mine, you know? Some people have um, things that a lot worse, happened to them a lot worse. And there's some people that, you know, have it all. But in saying that, I'm sort of just thankful that I'm, I'm still here and I can make a difference and I can do things that rather than saying, well, why can't I do this? It's, well, I can do this. And isn't it better that I can do this? For example, I do a park, park run. Sorry, that's just my, my alarm to take my tablets. Yeah. Um, I do a park run 
and instead of going okay well I used to do it in 26 minutes now it's 50 minutes or 55 minutes but you know what I'm still there I'm still yeah. doing it but I look at some people and I think well they could mm -hmm. be you know terminal or in a hospital mm -hmm. bed and not be able to walk yeah. so you're still yeah. enjoying your passions and that's great yes yeah, yeah. Um, I have a couple more questions left um, is there something you like to say about people who have MS and people with MS who are reluctant to take medication? Well, everyone's different with MS and how it actually manifests is, can be different, you know. So some people are more um, severely dependent, you know, f on wheelchairs, for example, for mobility. Um, and some people aren't. So I, I have a really nice appreciation for all people that are battling, whether it be MS, whether it be cancer, whether it be something that's happening in their lives, I have a real appreciation for those people now. Um, sorry, I've forgotten, I've forgotten what the question was. Oh, See, um, that, that's, that's what MS does, you go off on a track tangent sometimes and you're like, oh, that's okay. what's the question? <laughs> so it was about... Um Anything you like to say about people with MS who may be reluctant to take medication? Okay, so people who are reluctant to, medic to take medication, I, I say to those people, well, if it works for you, great. You know, uh, if you don't need medication, then don't take it. But for me, I needed it and I had more of a benefit by taking it. So the benefit outweighed um, the, the, the quality of life that I was having. So if you get a better outcome with medication, great. And if you don't, and you feel it's not for you, then that's fine too, you know? So everyone has their own opinion on it. So yeah, that, that's my, my take on it. Just one final question mm -hmm. is that, what would you say to um, the scientists or people who want to become scientists who are trying to look for a cure for MS or embedded treatments? Um, what would I say? I just, I would just say try and cure it, you know, try and reverse, reverse the damage if possible. So, um, if people are not able to walk and you can do something that fixes them, and gets the balance and the coordination and the spasticity back again, um, or corrected, I should say, then if they can do that, that would be great, right? Um, that's probably not the answer that I'm thinking, I'm sorry. That's a good answer. Sorry. Yeah, just, um, they just do the best that they can. Well, thanks for sitting down and taking the time. Not a problem. Thank you.